Hello YouTube and in this video I'm going to show you how to make your very own fully adjustable six foot rig jig. Now this rig jig has cost me just under £20 in components to make and it has taken me between four and five hours to assemble. It's fully adjustable and as you can see on the marks there it can take up to let's count one two three four five six seven eight nine ten rigs at a time you could even increase this if you had larger combs so all of these are marked you can see there and as you can see in the rubber there you can see on this one bit of line being held tight through the marked spot that keeps that very tight we have three line tensioners one at one, one at this end one in the middle one at the end we also have two spacers we have a tube or well, two tubes to keep it level the one at the front is marked every centimeter and it's drilled through every centimeter all the way up to 180 all of this is fully adjustable everything is on pins there with stops at the end so if I want to take that out I take the stop off pull the pin out I can move that slide that up to wherever I want let's go there say and then put the pin back through through the other side put the stop back on same applies to these fully adjustable pins go through right to the other side so you can put these tensioners and these stops in any position you want completely holds the line tight and allows it to be fully adjustable to make your rigs these type of things cost uh, well over £150 and this one has cost a fraction of that so please keep watching and I'll show you the process I went through to make this and please watch the end of the video for a bonus addition to this rig jig to make it that little bit more user friendly So to build this rig jig you're going to need two 2 meter lengths of Floplast 21.5mm, it's upside down but uh, there we are, 21.5mm white overflow pipe. A packet of 10 double pipe clips, 22mm. Five combs, these combs here have half as wide gaps and half as small gaps and they are approximately 20 centimeters long maybe a little bit more 22 four blocks of wood these are four by twos cut down and they're about three inches three inches long so we got four by two by three four pieces of those four squares of grip mat router mat carpet anything a little bit of grip they want to be just slightly smaller than your wooden squares a cheap pair of flip-flops these were 90p four screws approximately 30 mil and two wire coat hangers so the tools required for this job are a glue gun a drill an angle grinder a screwdriver or a screwdriver drill bit, a 4mm drill bit, a 6mm drill bit, a hacksaw, a tape measure, a Stanley knife blade or a knife, masking tape or fog tape, a straight edge for marking straight lines on the tube. So I'm using this triangular scale rule but you could use um, a straight piece of wood or straight piece of metal or anything to mark a straight line down a tube. A white or a silver or gold 
paint marker pen permanent and a sharp pencil and a permanent marker. So the first job in building this rig jig is to mark out straight lines on all four axes of both of these pipes. So I want to mark, want to mark a straight line at zero degrees, at 90 degrees, at 180 degrees and at 270 degrees on both of these pipes. So the easy way to do that, well, the easiest way I'm thinking is to do that, is firstly to tape both of these pipes together. So what I'm going to do is use a little bit of the electrical tape. I'm going to tape these two pipes together. Once these are lying straight, I can then use the front pipe to rest the pencil there. And I can hold them together with my hand, like so. I can mark a straight line all the way up to the other end. There's one straight line on that. And what I can then do is flip it over and use the one I've just marked to mark a straight line. on the other one. Voila. So what I'm going to do now is untake these. I can then mark at the ends the other three axes on both pipes and I can manipulate these round to use each pipe to mark on one another. So now I've got the line, one line marked straight down the uh, zero axis on both pipes. I am going to use the masking tape, the fog tape that I've got, put it around the pipe to then mark out the other three axes. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this off straight. Straight enough. Doesn't really matter. There we go. And I'm going to start the tape there on the line that's been marked. Around the pipe once. So I'm straight. Like so. You only need to do this once. Rip that off. And then you should be able to just see the overlap there. What I'm going to do is where that line is, I'm just going to cut, score this down there with the knife. Like so. So I can take the excess of the masking tape off there anything that was overlapping there then I can unpeel this masking tape like so I can offer it up to the tape measure I just need to find where I do that one there I can offer the start of it up at zero like so and then put that out there like that so I know the circumference of that pipe, just 68, 68 mil. So the circumference of that pipe is 68 mil. I've got one mark on the zero, or 360, which is there. So to get the opposite side, I need a half 68, which is 34. So I find the 34 mark there. I can mark that, like so. Half 34 is 17, so I need to find the 17, and I can mark that. There. And also the other side, 34 plus 17 is 51, like so. 
that they are my three marks to go back on my pipe. So I can then find that line again. Offer that, the edge of the tape back up to the line. Wrap it round. Like so. And then I can mark that there. That there. That there. I can peel that off. I know these pipes are all pretty much the same. And I can do the same for all four ends of this pipe to get a pretty accurate marking all the way around. Now I have the marks on all four ends of the pipe. I can then tape these up again. to mark both sides of these pipes. Take together again, get the angle, just hold the pencil at the same angle all the way along. And mark your line. Now once you've marked the four axes on these pipes, the next thing you want to do is find the middle. So I'm going to use the tape measure. Tape up, just double check that they are two meters. This one here is two meters one, so the middle is, doesn't matter, we're gonna have excess, so I'm gonna go for the middle at one meter. Just mark that out. So one meter there, we're gonna mark the middle. One mark will do, like so. And we'll do the same with the other one. Mark the middle of a metre, which is there. Like so. And then, again, with the mark there, a bit of tape on the side of it. You can tape around that mark, and as long as your tape matches up as it comes round, like so, you can use that to mark your centre line roughly all the way around like so rough center line we do the same right i'm now going to take the pencil line that's on the opposite side of the printed writing so that would be this one here I'm starting from the center there which i'm going to mark like so the sharpie I'm going to mark every centimetre 90 centimetres to the right and 90 centimetres to the left. That gives me 180 centimetres marked, which gives me a six foot working jig. So I'm just going to, I am just going to hold this ruler up against it and I can mark every mark off this ruler. Like so, I'll tidy it up afterwards. So I have now marked every centimetre up this pipe, only on one pipe, and only on one axis. So there's a centre at 90, and then we've got 100, 110, 120, all the way up that end to 180, and obviously all the way down that end. To zero. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to tape the other pipe to it with the center lines together, directly in, directly in line. I'm then going to mark on an axis on this pipe. I'm going to mark a dot at every centimeter on this second pipe. And I'm also gonna mark a dot on the 90 degree axis on the same pipe here. 
to put a drill hole all the way up this pipe. So on both pipes there's going to be 180 dots. So you can now see the marked pipe at the front and then you can see behind it I've put dots every centimetre on one of the axes on the back pipe and then if I turn this front pipe there I've put dots every centimetre marking up this pipe on the axis there that is 90 degrees from this axis there. Now I've got the dots on this axis on here I'm going to do exactly the same on the opposite axis this side and then I'm going to do exactly the same on the opposite one on this one as well so we're going to have dots on opposite sides of the pipe running through on both pipes right now once you've got your dots marks whatever on the two the zero and the 180 or the or the 90 and the 270 axis there you then need to drill them out and it's best to drill them out separately doing one side and then doing the other because you're not going to get through the pipe straight to get the holes in line so i'm going to start drilling this one out as i have already done this one it doesn't have to be super super accurate because the holes are going to be bigger than what we're going to put through there but there we are this one's done and then we're going to do this one now there's your finished product they're not perfectly in line it's very difficult but they're a lot larger than the pin that we're going to put through there so um there's enough um leeway to get it through so that's absolutely fine we can now leave these put these poles to one side and we can get on to the next item which is mounting five combs onto the double clips so what we're going to do we're going to mount four of the combs on these double clips straight upright and then one's going to be at an angle let me show you what I mean four of these combs are going to get mounted on the back end of these double clips and what I'm going to do is I am going to measure the width of the spine of the comb there, which is probably about 10 mil. And in the center there, I am going to cut 10 mil down, a 10 mil groove down here. I'm going to cut a 10 mil groove out of this bit and the same on that side so that that comb will slot in there. And I can glue it in place. So I'm going to do that straight up like that with four of them. And then with one of them, I'm going to mount the comb at an angle away from the double clips like so. Right, so now all the combs are in place, all I'm going to do is make sure that they are exactly or as near enough exactly in the right position. So I'm going to line these all up, make sure they are pretty good with each other, those two are. So let's get these two checked. So now going to fire up the glue gun and I'm just going to run some glue along these edges here to hold these combs in place on all four of the straight ones and on the angled one. Right so this is what you should have once you've glued these in place. Again nothing that pretty but uh, good enough. So you should have four combs glued in upright which is these four. They're glued in upright and they're spaced the same. And then you've got one glued in at an angle. As you can see there, it's angled back. Next thing I need to do, two of these can be put to the side because that's them done, staying as they are. Two of these 
two of these uprights are going to have a bit of this I think it's high density foam high density foam mounted halfway up on both sides that's for two of these and then on the angled one that's going to have a bit of high density on the front mounted all the way along so basically what I want to do with this sole this sole of a flip flop I'm going to cut a square to the length of this comb so I've got my chopping board comb to measure I'm not going to mark it out I'm just going to put a straight edge and cut right so I've now cut five lengths of the high density foam basically the sole of a flip flop um, there to the lengths of the comb there and um, what I'm going to do is on the angled one on the front face of the angled one or sorry I say the front face on the face where it's leaning away there I'm going to glue a strip of high density foam there and then on the other two flat ones I'm gluing a strip both sides so one there and one on the back so it will eventually be like that so back to the glue gun we'll glue these on and I don't really want to bring the glue too much up into there so there's going to be a strip along the bottom and then at the sides and that's it and maybe a blob in the middle so I'm going to do that now get them attached right here we have the five finished line spacers line tensioners that are going to go on the rig jig we've got one that end which is the end one that's going to be at zero that's the angled uh, line tensioner that's got the foam on one side we've got the two in the middle there we've got foam in the middle uh, on both sides and then you've got the two combs at the end there that are just plain now there's one more job to do on these and that's to mark uh, the the gaps in which we're going to run line through it and we're going to cut a slot in the foam at that same mark so I'm going to probably put a slot on the second gap in maybe the fifth gap in and so on and so forth and then I'm going to mark them with a pen mark where the line is so that we can easily see where the line is going to sit when we run it through these combs so I'm going to start that doing that now and I'll show you the process as we do it so there we are as you can see I've now marked all of these combs with the foam so I've marked the top of specific um, combs and then I've marked a line across where these markings are and that's just as guidance this is where it's going to grip the line if you want to grip the line so the next thing I'm going to do with that is start with the single one where I've done the marking I'm going to offer up the knife through there and then all I'm going to do is slice down into that foam maybe I don't know six seven mil like so that one's done the next one like so and then I'm going to go along all of these like this just cutting down into the foam not fully through it but you can see there I'm cutting down maybe halfway so I'm going to do the all three foam ones and then these will be done so now that these are all marked out and all the slices are cut in there to grip the line I now need to drill a hole directly through the two clips so I can put the pin in the adjustment pin so I've marked on all of them where the center is to match up with the holes on the pole and I'm going to drill these all out now with a six mil drill bit so I've now drilled the holes through these all five of these have now been drilled and these are now done don't need to do anything more just tidy them up doesn't really matter just tend to get little burrs of 
plastic coming off them. That's fine. They're done. The next thing I need to do is to get four more plain clips. And again, mark and drill the hole all the way through these. Um, ready for making feet. Now, once you've drilled the holes in the side of the four plain double clips, next thing to do with the screws is to mount them onto the four blocks of wood. Voila! Four double clips mounted onto the wooden blocks. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to glue the squares of router matting onto the bottom to add grip. So I'm going to do that now with a glue gun. There we have it. Your four feet, four stands, done. Voila. Right, so they're done now. They can be moved to the side. Don't need to do anything with them anymore. The next thing I need to do is to make nine pins out of these two coat hangers. The pins want to be, they want to be wider than the, the double clip. I want probably an inch overhang on one side and an inch and a half on the, on the other. And as if by magic, there we are. Nine cut pieces of coat hanger. Now, with a pair of pliers, just want to bend about 10, 15 mil over at one end. So I'm going to get all of them now. Voila! Again, nine pins. All done there. That's that step done now. Right, and here we have it, the last thing I've done. I've cut nine small squares off cuts of the flip-flop sole, and I've just pushed a hole through with the pins we've just made. And I've pushed a hole through these here, just through the center. And now, with all the components you now have, and you've now built, You are now able to assemble this fully adjustable six foot rig jig. Look at that, there we are. You can clip these on as and where you want. They're fully adjustable, slide up and down. Holes every centimeters. Done. Now, please keep watching for a bonus addition to make this rig jig that little bit more rig making friendly. Now, what I've done is I've added a third rail to the front here. with some single clips and then I've added a bit tray so I'll put my bits in there, slide it along if I need it a bit further along I'll just pull the pin out pull the pin out slide it past the gap and the pins just go straight back in like that very easy and it slide along as I'm working along There we have it, a fully functional rig jig with terminal tackle tray, ready for you to build all your rigs up to six foot long. And for around 20 pound. I really do hope you've enjoyed this video. I really hope it's inspired you to maybe build one and if it has please uh, let us know any sort of upgrades or mods that you've done to make it better and please uh, subscribe to this channel hit the bell for your notifications so you know when the videos go up and uh, like and share these videos and until next time tight lines